Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. No Yay. Idea. Nobody on yet. Okay. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. Got lots of things to show tonight. Okay. We got one birth and one. There we go. Now we're cranking. There we go. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. Yeah, giving people a couple of seconds to come on, jump on. It's January 2023. This is Patchwork Party, and I'm Karen, and we are here at Sew and Save. Lots of fun things to show you tonight. New year, new projects. Are you ready for some new fun things to do? I hope so, because we got a lot of them. Hey, Judy Lenderman, how are ya? Haven't seen you for a while. Glad to see you online. <laughs> hello. Hi, girls. Hi, girls. Thanks for joining us today. Nina, hey. Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, Fran Steinbrenner, how are ya? Ursula, hi, Ursula. How are ya? Happy New Year to all you girls. Thanks for joining us tonight. Jody hey, Jody Kersman. How's your arm, Jody? See, I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> My arm's doing good. I can't, I can't keep up with all that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's, Joe's, Joe can't do it. He can't do it anymore. So, welcome, everybody. We are here for Patchwork Party. We're here at Stone Save. I'm Karen, and it is January 2023. Happy New Year. Happy, happy New Year. Are you ready for some new projects? I hope so because we've got a lot of fun and lots of fun in store for you this year and lots of things coming up. So I think we should get started. Yep. We can get started. Hmm? Oh, yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh, always forget that. Don't forget to like us tonight. Share us and subscribe to our YouTube channel and your name will go in to win a gift card at the end of the night. So please like us, share us and sign up for our YouTube channel. Um, also, anything that I show you tonight is on the Patchwork Party section of our website for 20% off all week. So if you didn't catch us on Monday night and you're watching us, you're watching the rerun, <laughs> um, you can still get that savings all the way through Sunday. So um, watch us online, watch us on YouTube, and don't forget to like and share us and use the coupon code PP20 to get 20% off of everything I'm showing you tonight. Yay, so lots of fun stuff on sale, lots of new things to show you. So we're gonna start over here, Joe, over here by the Valentine stuff. And I think I'm gonna grab these just cause I can. So hang on, go over and show them the little Valentine's table. See that red and white table? That's Valentine's. Uh-oh, you've got um, a little more than a month. It's, it's January 9th. When is, when is Valentine's Day, Joe? February 14th. February 14th. He's very good at Valentine's, actually. He's very good at Valentine's Day. But we've got lots of little Valentine projects to show you tonight. Um, lots of quick things that you can just kind of whip out quick and have them ready for the 14th or to enjoy all February. So we have some fun. These are not necessary. Well, they are kind of, um, they are kind of, some of them are valentines -y, some are not. Um, our little... Um, placemats. So this is part of our placement of the month club. So you will get six placemats with um, three different backings in your kit. So each you'll be able to um, back two placemats with each of your backings. Okay and then the projects look like this. This is um, happiness fills this home. And then this is kind of Valentine's-y, just some hearts, another heart, um, gratitude, um, changes everything. Very nice. And then another flower heart, and then love blooms here. So that's this set of placemats. So you get six placemats, three different backings, and off you go. Quick, simple, easy. We just did kind of a diagonal type of made a little diamond for our um, quilting. So it's quick, fast, easy. You can do this in no time flat. We put bindings on ours. You can just put them right sides together, flip them, stitch around them, 
and call it a day. You don't have to fuss with the binding. We just happen to look like the way um, placemats look with a binding on. So that is entirely up to you. But your kit comes with the fronts and the backs, but no binding. Okay, so that's my first one. I'm going to put this over here. Um, over here is a cute little bag, little Valentine's bag for the little girls. They can put their little Valentines and their candies in there or just carry it around. Can you see it up close? Um, this is a panel, and the panel comes with everything that you need to make the bag. So it has the lining. This is your panel. It has the instructions on how to make it. It also has like little Valentines, like um, to make like a little postcard to put in your little bag. So cute for the little girls. And so you can see the front, the back, and the little handles. And instructions on how to make everything in your little kit. So it makes this cute little bag right here. This cute little bag for the girls for Valentine's. Very cute. And fast and easy. We also have um, we have another set of placemats. Oops, this one makes six placemats as well. This is a panel with all of, this is the J. Wecker Fritch um, line of fabric, and she has a panel with all of the centers on it, and then we added the inner binding, or the inner border, the outer border binding, and back. All of that will be in your kit, enough to make six placemats. So here's the first one. She's kind of, it's a, this is a little bit more artsy, a little bit more fun and funky. So her things are always really fun. So there's that one. Yeah, they're very cool. Kind of a little bit more hip and modern. Maybe for, you know, the younger crowd, for the younger crowd, for your, for your granddaughters or kids and really cute makes a really cute little shower gift even very sweet so here's another one so you get all six a black inner border a red outer border your backing and your binding enough to make six placemats so again we just did kind of a diamond design on there and quick and easy to quilt them up and off you go yeah really nice so then to match that, she has this little, cute little banner. So this is a panel, and the panel makes the little banner and the little um, tie to hold it. So all of those little pa panel pieces. So they're all kind of cut in, a, so you just cut them in a triangle, um, put them right sides together, flip them and press them. And then we didn't even sew them across the top. We added them just sew them straight across onto the little string tie that comes with it and quick and easy to do. So you wouldn't have to make this long of a, of a banner, but um, you could separate it out and give it as a couple of gifts. And also on that is um, enough to make this little love panel a banner too. So the banners are really fun. I like to put these across the front of my fireplace. They're really cute. Yeah. So this is all part of that panel. And there's instructions with, uh, there are not instructions with the panel, but um, it's just sewing them together, flipping them, and sewing. The, there might be instructions on there. I can't remember. I think there are. There usually is. But um, so your, pan, your um, kit comes with the panel, the backing, and um, the ties. So that's all in your kit. Yeah, along with our Valentine's things, we have some Valentine layer cakes. We have several Valentine layer cakes, jelly rolls. We have the little itty bitty mini charms for those of you who are making those cute Nantucket bags. They're perfect for those little Nantucket bags. And then we have also have charm packs, really sugar and spice charm packs from Riley Blake. So. Lots and some fat quarters and yardage. Yeah, we have Valentine yardage as well. And then um, there's a table runner. We have our Be Mine table runner. 
So there's kits to make that as well. Yep, that one. The little round table toppers, we have kits for those. Those are called, well, the names are, the, um, and it's called Endless Love, and there's two styles of that one to choose from. We've got those two, lots of Valentine's things. And what, wait, there's more. Um, we also have little kits to make these little heart pockets. The little heart pockets are really super cute. I'm going to take the pin off so you can see them. Um, they make a little pocket like this so that you can put a little candy bar in there. We had candy bars in there, but somehow they all got eaten. They're gone. Gone. So it'll fit like a little Hershey bar or any kind of little, or you can put little um, candy kisses in there. So it makes, your kit will make four little hearts, little pocket hearts for your treats. We also have, we have everything Valentine's. We love Valentine's Day. We have kits for little pop pinchers. Aren't these adorable? Little pop pinchers, little heart-shaped pop pinchers. So everything that you need to make two pot pinchers. And last, and of course, but not least, um, we have kits to make little, oops, little mug, kind of mug rugs. Little table toppers or mug rugs. Kits for those as well. Lots of little kits of fun, just quick and easy projects for Valentine's Day. You don't want to spend a lot of time. You don't want to do a lot of stuff. But it's always fun to have some little springy Valentine. Now that we're done with Christmas, we can look past winter Valentine's. And then spring. I can't wait. We got all kinds of spring projects, too. All right, so those are our Valentine project. Any questions on those? Really fun, fast, easy projects. Lots of variety. Somebody said the pot pinchers are adorable. Aren't they cute? And they whip together so fast, it doesn't take you long to make them. So they're really fun. Yeah, that and maybe like a little, some little heart-shaped cookies. Great gift. Really, really nice little gift for Valentine's Day. Something different than just candy or whatever. Um, or flowers, which are probably pretty expensive. Um, so, um, all of these are on our website um, under Patchwork Party. PP20 gets you 20% off of all of those this week. And don't forget to like us and share us. So still people liking and sharing. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yay, Jill. Thank you for helping out. <laughs> yep, cool. Cool. If you need a link or you need anything, just shout out and we'll, we'll get you. So I am standing behind um, Kim Deal's new fabric line. It is called Scraps of Kindness. So it's a nice size line. Um, yep, you can go down and show everybody. Um, so I promised you, I promised you girls who like to go to the dark side, because I like to go to the dark side, um, that we would get some nice dark fabrics in. And this is Scraps of Kindness. There are patterns that go along with this line. Yep, down to the second row as well. A really good size line. Lots of um, different colors. You know, it's just, it's really Kim Deal. And she's going to have some patterns or a pattern book. I think she's going to have a sew along as well. Um, but those have not come out. We're waiting for those because I just reached out to my sales rep when the fabric came in and went, I know there's some really cute patterns that go along with this what's the deal on those? And she said, mm, not available yet. So she was hoping sometime mid-January, which is coming up soon, that the patterns and things would be available for this line of fabric. But in the meantime, a really great book to go along with this would be Stashtastic. So Stashtastic is on our book that's on sale this month for 20% off in the Patchwork Party section of the website. PP20 gets you 20% off. So a great book to use up your scraps from home or because sometimes we just, we look at everything we have at home and go, I need something new. So you can come in and pick up some fat quarters of scrap ta of scrappiness, scraps of kindness and um, work on a scraptastic project. Yeah, a so, like yeah, we have a lot of um, Kim Deal fans, a lot of people who look and collect her fabric. So this is her next line. It's very, it's really popular. People will really like it. People who love um, Kim Deal love her fabrics. So, 
Got the whole thing. Yes, thank you so much for liking and sharing. Don't forget when you like and share, um, your name goes in to win a gift card tonight. So thank you so much for that. And don't forget to use your coupon code PP20 to get 20% off your sale. Um, I'm going to go over here and tell you a little bit about these. These are, um, you might have seen these out and about a little bit. These are from Riley Blake. They are doing a bench pillow of the month. And they have sent us a sample, um, a kit of each of the 12 um, bench pillows for us to make so that we have our samples ready. And we were supposed to have kits in January, but I haven't seen them. And I have to reach out to my sales rep and go, hmm, when are we going to start getting those kits? Um, so every month you will get a kit to make a bench pillow. We are taking and making these into table runners. So you could make a bench pillow or a t I think it'll make an adorable table runner. All we're gonna do is add some binding and it will be done. So these will come in a little box like the other pillow of the month clubs that we've had and everything comes in it for the front, you will need to add your back. So whether you're making a bench pillow or a table runner, you're in. A lot of people don't have benches they always say, but just think about this on your couch. You could have a nice so long. They like the bee. Yeah, the bee is adorable. Right. So they're really cute. So don't ask me what month this is. Don't know. But we're kind of working through our 12 different table runners and making kits. Um, this one we still have to um, add the, t the kite tails on. And um, so we still have a little adorning to do on this yeah, one yet. Yeah, I love these. Yeah, I think they're, yeah, we're going to call them bench runners. So it's either a bench pillow or a bench runner. <laughs> it can be whichever one. Yeah, we made, up, we made up a new name for these. So whatever works best for you, I think an, it makes an adorable table runner if you don't have a bench. Or put them across the back of your couch. Great couch pillows. So here's kind of an Eastery one. So whenever we start getting these, these will be available so you'll be able to get the whole all 12 of them um, or you can pick and choose which one you like and so you can get one or the other cute little eastery one so eventually whenever they send them that's when our year will end up starting and this is just a cute one with little flowers so this is just four of them that we've gotten done so far some people are remembering the benches they have for you. yes <laughs> i know so i'm going to reach out this week and say hey where are our bench pillow table runners <laughs> kits? <laughs> because we're ready to do these and they're really fun and cute. So we will get, whenever they send us the kits, we'll get those started. I don't know if they forgot us or what the deal is, but, but hopefully not. Alrighty, so I'm gonna set these up over here. Um, then. What is the size of those, Karen? Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. Maybe wait. I can I, wait. I have a me I have a thing to measure. They look like they're, about three they're a couple feet wide. <laughs> Hang on here. I got my I got my tape measure. So they're um, about sixteen ish, fifth about sixteen ish by thirty six ish. Sixteen by thirty six. Sixteen by thirty six. Yeah. So you can always add a little bit more. You could add a little bit more of a border if you wanted to. Um, these are just a lot of different, like Riley Blake um, fabrics. Some of them, are, they, they have all kinds of different things. So mostly they're their basic fabrics. They are adorable and really fun to make, really fun to make. So I will follow up on this a little bit more tomorrow and see where our kits are, because we're ready. We're very excited. Now that we got them done, sub done, we're very excited to get going on them. Um, another thing that we have, we had these previously, but this is a new set. This is from Lori Holt. So if you're a Lori Holt, even if you're not, these are really, really cool. So this is big. So this is, if you remember once we had a panel that made bags, this is the same type of thing, but the bags are different. Yeah, you're going to get a little closer. You're going to get four big bags and four small bags. 
in your kit. Each one of these big rectangles makes a bag. Oh, these are cool. They're very cool. They're, I think they're actually cuter than the ones we had before, now that I made all of those. But we might have to make those again. Um, and in your kit, you will also get um, eight zippers. These zippers match her, are dyed to match her fabrics exactly. And she will tell you which color to use on which zipper bag. So on this one, it says Riley Green. So you'll use the Riley Green zipper on this bag. And this one, I don't know, this one says um, Schoolhouse Red. So you'll use your Schoolhouse Red zipper on this bag. But the bags are really cool. Um, some of them, when we made them before, um, some of them we lined and quilted, and they turned out really cute. So you get four big bags, one, two, three, four big bags, four small bags, and then little zipper tags. And all of your instructions on how to put this together are right here. The fabric is 60 inches wide, and this is a yard and a half of fabric, actually, at 60 inches wide, and it's canvassy. It's like home deck fabric. So it's not your regular cotton, it's heavy to make those little zipper bags. Okay, super cute little designs. Really sweet. I love the little pumpkin with the, I just like a, they're cute. Oops, I'm sorry. Hold it, hold it, holding, holding some more. <laughs> so really fun, cute. We might make these up for next time, but we just got them in. And so really fun to make these little bags. And they make great gifts for your quilting friends as well. I know. Now, don't you want to? I know, and now these are really cute too. I know, I did the same thing. I made them, and now I'm like, yeah, yeah, you could give those away and keep these for yourself. Alrighty, where are we going to go? We're going to go over here. Um, this line of fabric is called Forget Me Not. And I made this little table runner, and the, the pattern is from Cluck Cluck Sew. So. And you can either make a quilt or a table runner. And both patterns are inside this pack. So you can make one or the other. I made the table runner. Or it could be a bench pillow. What am I doing? This? Okay. Is it bothering you? <laughs> okay. It's bothering Joe. Okay. So um, table runner or quilt. We're making table runner kits. If you're interested in a quilt, um, kit out of this just let us know and we'll put a quilt kit together but right now we're just doing the table um, runners really fun project it took me maybe two days to work to do this so they were fun yeah mostly because I sold my flowers wrong but that was just me so it helps sometimes you know how sometimes it helps if you look at the pictures and read the instructions yeah yeah sometimes Sometimes it works better if you do that. So once I did that, I was fine. Really easy to put together, really fun project. So really cute, I just think it, I'm just happy to, for some spring and, and fun things. So now that I moved this, I'm gonna move this back. This is a purse, this is a bag from Hoop Sisters. So people keep asking, can I, this is machine embroidery. So, um, it's made on your embroidery machine, not on your regular sewing machine. So what we have is a little pack here with your design and instructions all right in here, already put on a stick for you so you don't have to put a stick, and the foam stabilizer because the foam stabilizer is what you use to make your bag. So there's enough foam stabilizer in here to make, I think, two bags. This is the, and I have to remember, they don't have a small bag. They have a medium bag and a large bag. So I think there's enough foam stabilizer in here because I have a lot left to make two bags. Okie dokie. And you just add fabric and zippers. And it was really fun to make. So it makes a really cute bag. There's um, four pockets. There's four zipper pockets that go all the way around. So it's called the Twisted Tote. So four pockets, and then there's pockets on the inside as well. Blah. If I can open that up. There we go. So there's pockets on the inside here as well. Plenty big for phones and wallets and, and keys and things. It's a nice big bag. Yeah. This is the medium-sized bag. This isn't even the big bag. So the other bag is bigger. 
So what you end up doing is embroidering out these rectangles and then on your sewing machine it, they tell you how to add your zippers to make your side pieces. So you're embroidering out all of these pieces on your embroidery all machine. The, all the circles. Yeah, it does all the circles. That's very cool. Yeah, it makes right. all your pieces and then it tells you how to very easily add the zippers and put it all together. It's really kind of cool how it all goes together. Because it's kind of twist, because you can see it does twist. So it's really fun. Fun, simple, easy to do. Mm, it's a good, it's a good weekend project. It'll take you the weekend to get it all embroidered out and done. But really fun. So we have that available. Did you use this uh, fabric here? This fabric? No, this was a different Riley Blake line of fabric. Yeah, it's a different Riley Blake. Different one. I think we showed it last time. It's on the other side, otherwise I'd show it to you again. This fabric is called um, Firefly. It is from Clothworks. And so Joe can kind of do a close-up of these. And as long as we're over here showing that, we will go over here. We'll then go over here and... We'll do it. We have a couple demos tonight, so I hope you're up for a couple demos. Um, that I did on like my seven by twelve ish hoop, nine by twelve ish hoop. So if you wanted to do the big one, you would need a bigger hoop. You'd need like a mega hoop or a larger size hoop. Okay, so the Firefly fabric from Clothworks. I'm using to make these adorable, those down there, that fabric makes these guys, aren't they a hoot? I think these are the cutest chickens I swear to God I've ever seen. And I've got stuff on here. Um, so it makes this project, that project, that's the project. It's a um, small quilt, I think it's 40 by 46-ish ish so it's not big it's not huge so there's um two four five chickens all the chickens have a name so that guy up there that's that's randall randall, like randall. randall. yep this is walter 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 nope nope this is um florence and this is Theo. So I still have Henry, Henry, Harriet to do. I still have to do Harriet and some more flowers. So there's some other flowers to be done in here. There what? I was just educating. I get it. The chickens with the things to our our boys. They all have things. <laughs> what, what things are you talking about? Well, they said Walter looks like he's got a dress. Yeah, Walter kind of does look like he's got a skirt on. Thank you. They're chickens, though. They're chickens. <laughs> Don't be so judgy. Walter is adorable. Can I say that maybe Walter's a cross-dresser? Can I say that? On, I don't think I can say that on Facebook. <laughs> so don't be judging. We're moving right along away from poor little Walter, who I thought was just adorable. Okay, so along, these are all applique, and they are so fun. They've been so fun to applique. And I bet I, you know, it's one of those projects where I had to do, I like, cut out all the pieces for for one of them and then I have to applique it up I can't like do all the cutting and then come back and like lay everything out and do it. I have to do them one at a time because they're just so cute I had to make them so as they go along they're, they're not embroidered. they are machine applique they are not machine embroidered so you could do this on your regular sewing machine okay. so I so I did just the typical um, machine applique and people were asking about um, doing having a basic machine applique class and I think we're I'm gonna get that on the schedule and get a project and and do that because people yeah, have been asking about that. Like that yes I know he's so cute and I find it I find it just kind of people kind of get a little stressed out about it but I just find it very relaxing to do and I put on a movie and it's just fun to see how they turn out and they're just so much fun and, and they're so cute so I've done all of this 
on my machine except for the little eyeballs which are little French knots that I did by hand but I did this little stitch all on my sewing machine so it's all done on my regular sewing machine <clears throat> basic machine applique Very okay so then the other part that I'm going to tell you about show the project again, yeah let me show the project again, again. we have we have oops just hold it up right okay let me hold it like this um, we have kits for these so we've made up kits for these so the kit includes the pattern yeah. every, all, all the patterns for applique but I love the chickens at first when I first ordered it I was like well you know I don't think I really need a chicken quilt so I was thinking that you could just and you still could you could take and do a table runner or a placemat or put one on an apron you know so if but the the project isn't big it's 40 by 46 so it's a, like a wall hanging so I'll have it finished up by by next patchwork party and show it to you all finished up I kind of have an idea of something different that I want to do with it um, so we'll see if that works out but the other thing besides the machine applique that are on here are these little um, are these little pinwheels and the pattern and I like it when people who write a pattern are smart I don't like it when they when I go oh yeah we're not doing it that way and I have to redo it these people were very very smart as to how to do these little pinwheels so I'm going to show you how to do the pinwheels tonight because it's a lot of fun I've done a few of them this is going to be a demonstration for a few minutes from now we're going to do a different demo but we have to make 19 pinwheel blocks and to do that usually you're doing pinwheel blocks um, by making half square triangles and then sewing those together to make your pinwheel you will be doing that but you'll be making your half square triangles in a really fast and fun way so each each um, pinwheel takes four half square triangles okay so what they have you do which is very very smart you will probably need to get closer okay so what they're going to have you do is if you can kind of see this one I know I stitched it in white what they have you do is they're taking um, for their particular size they're taking a four and a half inch square and you're taking you know just like you typically do you take a, a, my background square and then a colored square and put those together right sides together and then you stitch a quarter of an inch all the way around the square so it's not like you usually do where you draw you know if you're doing a half square triangle you're drawing a line diagonally sewing on both sides cutting it apart and you have end up with two half square triangles in that method in this method you're going to end up with four half square triangles which is exactly the amount of of triangles that you're going to need to make your pinwheel so what I do is I start and I take and I stitch up one side on each if I was doing this I would have 19 of these um, pairs lined up so I'd have a light and my dark all lined up all 19 of them and I would chain stitch down all one side okay make sense then I pop them apart and then I would chain stitch down the next side because we're gonna go all we're gonna go all the way around this block a quarter of an inch from the edge and then I would flip it again I would pop them apart put them in and do all 19 down the next side till I got all the way around make sense fast easy so you're not stopping and starting to go around each one of these you're going down a great big long line and you're getting them all done at once so so these are mine like all put together okay so now I have sewn all the way around this block now you can kind of pull in where's my other ruler right here and what I've done just so you can see I drew a line because now what you're going to do is you're going to cut here and here so you're going to cut diagonally both directions so I don't know if you can see that sure, I'm going to pull up a little bit closer so that it's a little easier for me to cut so I drew this line so you can see that I'm going to cut diagonally in both directions so when I do that I'm gonna line up and I don't know if you can see because you've come all the way straight here and you've come all the way straight along here so you've got a little corner with your stitching and you can see that my line goes right through that corner so when I line up my ruler 
I'm going to go right straight through those two corners and my little points. Okay, I'm going to cut. And usually what I would do probably is use my, my um, rotating cutter because I don't kind of don't want to move these. I kind of want them to stay right where they're at. But then you're going to come along and you're going to do the same thing again. Go from point to point through those two corners and cut. And when I do that, I'm going to end up with four half square triangles. They're amazing. So now when I open this up, I'm going to press it and I'm going to take these and I'm going to press them. Come on, come here. There we go. Toward the dark. Just like this. Flip it over, press it toward the dark side. Go to the dark side with these ladies. And I would come along and I would trim and cut all 19 squares that I need and do them all at the same time. Beautiful. And these, these little dog ears always bother me, so I trim those off. And I'll take them and I'll line them up just like this in my hand. I don't like those little dog ears on there. I line them up right in my hand and then I just kind of go over the garbage and just nip these off. Nip, nip, nip. Snip, snip, snip. Get rid of them. Just like that. So it doesn't take you long when you kind of line them up like that. So now I'm ready to take them and lay them and make my, here we go, my pinwheel. And I noticed what I did, because last night when I was making my pinwheel, here we go, um, I noticed that this is the way the pinwheels are supposed to go. I have it upside down, yep. This is the way the pinwheels are supposed to go. So you want to be careful because if you look at this, this pinwheel is spinning a different direction than this one. Can you kind of see that? Yeah. So you really want them all to spin this way. So I have to pull this one apart and line them back up so they spin this way. Gotcha. So I wasn't watching my instructions because you want them all to go the same way so that when they fit together, they're all going to fit together nicely like this. If I do these, if I put this one with this, I'm going to have two darts together, and that's not what you want. And there's no way of making that happen with this. So you can put them together incorrectly, unless you don't care how your pinwheel spin. <laughs> but in this, yes, you want to be consistent and have them all go the same way. So um, this is actually the way the instructions have you do it. So that's the way I'm going to do this. I'm going to pull this one apart and do it over again. So now I'm going to take and I'm going since I've pressed my seams towards the dark side. When I lay, I'm going to lay this one on top of the other one. And I'm going to be sewing this edge and this one on top of this one. And I'll be sewing this edge. And because I've pressed my seams to the dark side, these two seams are going the opposite direction and they're nesting. So they're going to make a nice tight, nice tight seam and a nice point. So that one goes down. This one goes the opposite way. So they nest. Okay, and that's what you want. So I would probably cut all mine. I get them laid, laid out so that all of those sides that I'm going to sew are kind of facing my sewing machine. And then I can just pick them up. And again, I can chain stitch all of those together. But you kind of have to watch and make sure that you've laid them correctly when you kind of line them up. Somebody was asking, did you have a question? How did you do my legs on my sewing machine? How did I do my legs on my sewing machine? Oh, let me move this over. On my sewing machine, there's a stitch that goes um, forward twice and backwards. Forward twice, like it goes forward three times, I think, and then backwards twice, three times, and then backwards. So it kind of goes forward and back on top of itself. I think it's almost supposed to be like maybe like a stretch stitch for a swimsuit or something, but it just, I drew the legs out with my Frixion pen because there's a pattern. So all of these, and another nice thing that they've done, nothing irritates me more than to open up a pattern for applique and the pattern pieces are not reversed. And you have to sit and reverse all of those pattern pieces before you can use them. These are all reversed, so they're all ready to go. 
And then once you've cut out your pieces, you have a big sheet like this. I lay my, I lay my white piece of fabric on top of my light board and the light shines through and I can see Walter's outline through my white fabric. So you drew it on with the Frixion pen. I drew this part on with the Frixion pen. I take this over, see that's why we need the class. <laughs> so we're gonna, so um, once I lay out all my pieces, I take it out over to the ironing board because they all have the, um, the soft fuse on the back and I iron them all down and stick them all down. And then I drew my legs out and then I do, did those on my sewing machine. So super fun and fast and simple and easy to do. But we'll have a class. It's time I think for a class. We haven't had a um, applique class in a long, long time. Um, one of the things that I do do is I back my fabric with just like um, an SF 101, which is just a fusible lightweight interfacing. Um, so the girls who do a lot of applique or a lot of machine embroidery know what SF-101 is. We have it um, in rolls and we also have it by the yard. So that just gives my fabric a little bit more stability and um, just makes it so that um, the applique goes on much easier and your stitches don't pucker. So that'll all be part of the class too. So I've got my two, um, my two little... Um, half square triangles stitched and ready to go and you can kind of see I did these two and I um, blankets or um, uh, chain stitch those together so I'm going to clip those apart and then again I'm going to press my seam toward the dark on this so I'm going to press both of these toward the dark this one and this one. So now I'm ready to line these up and sew them together. So since I press towards the dark, again, when I sew my seams, they're going in two different directions, so they're going to nest really nice. So this is what I do when I sew something like this together, and I need to get this point just perfect, or as perfect as we can possibly get it because now we're going to sew these two together right here, and we want this point to match that point. So we want this point to match that point once we've sewn our quarter inch seam. And that's going to happen, I think, pretty easily on these. So what I do is I take and I line these up, and my two seams have nested. Mm -hmm. And when I go over to my sewing machine, I sew, I don't sew the entire seam. I sew from about, probably about right here across this seam and over to here and once I do that I then open it up and check it to see if my points have matched if they haven't all I have to do is rip up this little bit I don't have to start all over and rip from this edge to this edge first of all and whenever you start ripping that kind of thing you start stretching your fabric and the other thing that's really nice about doing this is that a lot of times you get this matched up all really nice here, but you start sewing here and your fabric is shifting at different directions so that by the time you get to this seam, they've shifted away from one another. If you start and stop right here, that's not going to happen. You're going to get that nicely matched. Yeah, and a lot of times... Some people are saying they like the chest. Yeah, I do this all the time. And then once I know that this is okay and all I've got is like this much stitching, I'll just start here at my quarter inch and go straight across. And you'll, and you'll just incorporate that little line of stitching in with the rest of your stitching. You don't have to rip it out or anything. Um, so then I can just kind of check that. And a lot of times I'll put a pin into this little corner and match it up with that little corner. And I can just kind of put my pin straight through those two little points, pick this up, take this over to my sewing machine and just stitch that little piece so you, know you, got it. So you know you kind of got it you know sometimes I'll have to do it again but you know you know it's the it's the variable of three if you can't get it in three times then it's not meant to happen <laughs> just get it as close as you can and move on <laughs> so so that's my little tip for getting these pretty darn perfect and I'm really sad that he didn't match up because now I have to take it apart 
I might just, it might just be easier to make a new one than to take this one apart and start over. But that's okay. So that's my little tip for doing these perfect pinwheels. It's great that if you can take one, two squares of fabric, your background and your colored fabric, put those together and make four half square triangles all at once, so much faster and easier. So that's, so I was happy that they used that method to make these pinwheels. So that's gonna make that go really super fast. So that makes that fun. So you can tell they're smart people. So we have the kits for these. For these guys on um, our website, PP20 and Patchwork Party will get you 20% off your kit. So that's my story on that. Where are we going here? We've talked about that, that, and that. Okay, so let's look at this fabric, this quilt back here. This is called um, Solstice the Craftsman. I don't know what that means. Okay, that's why. Okay, the fabric is called Solstice. The pattern is called the Craftsman. So that's how that worked. <laughs> really, really pretty fabric. It just makes you feel like you're looking into a pool of water. Really simple, fun pattern. Easy to do. And just really kind of cool. So it's called Solstice, the Craftsman. It's 55 by 70. And there are kits available. The kit is called Solstice, the Craftsman. I think it's all together as the name. I think it's all together as the name. So Solstice is the name of the fabric, and the Craftsman is the name of the pattern. Do you have a kit for the chickens? We have a kit for the chickens. What's the chicken kit called? Chicken kit called is called Chicken Scratch. <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Yes, it is. It's called Chicken Scratch. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking these down so that you can see our other quilt that's behind this, behind the chickens. We have a barn, a kind of a... And so we have, um, le last month I showed you the Grace fabric. Well, um, the Grace fabric comes with, oh, you're going to step on my little flower. Don't step on my flower, it fell on the floor. Um, this is called Farm Fresh Grays. And part of the Grace pattern is this um, panel that has all of these little seat pack. Oops, careful, careful, careful. Don't trip. We got all kinds of things on the floor. Are all these um, kind of um seed sack or flower sack designs and we cut those out and then gray is it's very cool you know this is from Sweetwater it's the Sweetwater fair I know I love that quilt really perfect really really cool careful as you're careful as you're popping around there okay so we have gotten um, we have been collecting and ordering all kinds of buy any things. So um, where our Christmas fabric used to be is going to kind of be our buy any um, department. So we've got zippers. We've got all kinds of things coming in. And next month we're going to have a, <clears throat> a um, trunk show. So lots of fun things. We just lost that. Um, coming in from buy any. So I made a couple of bags to get us started. A couple of easy, easy bags. So these are kind of beginner projects, or if you just like the bags, even though you've made a lot of bags in, in the past, um, <clears throat> really fun to do. This one has just like a little mesh on it, so it's a great bag for all kinds of things. You can see through it, and it has that nice mesh from By Annie. So um, the great thing about these two bags is they kind of get you started. Um, these are starter projects. So for this one, I shoved it, stuffed it all full of stuff. Um, these two bags teach you how to use the um, soft and stable, teaches you how to put a zipper in, teaches you how to make, oh, I know you're going to cringe, and I'm going to show you in a second, but um, bias binding, because they bind a lot of their, the edges in their projects. Now this one, I didn't make the binding, we have already pre-made bias binding on a roll so you can buy it by the yard. So you don't have to make it if you don't want to. And for this one, since it was on the inside of my bag, I just wanted something that kind of coordinated. It didn't have to be fancy. Now sometimes you want it to be fancy, but this one I thought, this is really cute, it works, and I don't have to make the bias binding. <clears throat> so we bought this, I bought this bias binding 
by the yard off of a roll. And we've got all different colors of this. So this bag is called the Easy Does It. It's very similar to our little Nantucket bag, but it's bigger and the sides and the zipper kind of opens up wider, kind of opens up down the sides so you can open it up a little bit wider and has these nice little handles on to kind of, as a kind of a grippy. <clears throat> kind of reminds me of like a, um, a shaving kit kind of bag. And then of course I did just show you this one with the mesh and then on the back it's just quilted on the back. So this teaches, they teach you how to um, quilt the soft and stable and how to make the binding um, and how to put your zipper in. And it's so easy to put these zippers in. Their instructions are really very good and they have videos online to um, help you along as well. So this um, little project bag is called the Peacekeeper and the other project is called Easy Does It is the little bag. But let me show you how simple it is to make this bias binding. I know you're all cringing. You're, you don't want to do it. But it is so super easy, you won't even believe it. My notion of the, one of my notions of the week, month, day, <laughs> this month for Patrick Party, is this really fun pin picker that has a light on it. Ta-da! So if you take your pins and you drop them and drop them, mine always fall underneath my sewing machine table so I can never see them. It picks up a whole lot of pins all at once, really long, perfect, picks them all up and it's lighted so that you can see under your sewing table to make sure you've got them all because you know you always miss them. So, and then the cats get them and that's never good. So our little pin picker, lighted pin picker upper. And it makes a good cat toy because they play it like the, it's like a little laser thing and they'll chase it. So it's also a good cat toy. Hmm? Both of them, both Gizmo and Marley love to chase these things. And then what was my other one? Oh, my other, my other little notion of the month is this perfect piecing book by Patty Murphy. So this is um, tips and tricks to fine tune your patchwork quilting. So it's just a little handy guide. All kinds of different things in here. Um, pressing um, versus ironing, all kinds of little things. Scant quarter inch seam, how to get the perfect scant quarter inch seam. Cut things, tips on cutting, strip piecing, you know, all kinds of different little ideas on quilting and I, things to do. So how to do a four patch, how to do a nine patch, Lots of instructions, lots of tips and tricks. So it's a great little handy book to have for yourself and to give as a gift to a quilting friend. So that's our other um, kind of little notion of the month. Those are in the Patchwork Party section of our website, PP20. Gets you 20% um, off. And don't forget to like us and share us so that your name goes in for a gift card tonight. So to make bias binding. So super simple. You're going to start out with a square. And in each of their patterns, they tell you what size square to start out with. So for the Easy Does It bag, they wanted me to have a 14 inch square. For the Peacekeeper, they wanted you to have a 13 and a half inch square. So they will tell you what size square to start out with so that when you're all done and you get everything cut up, you will have enough bias binding to, do, use your, to finish your project. So that's really nice. So you're going to start out with a square of fabric. You can do that, right? So I cut a square. I don't remember what size square this is. Not, doesn't matter. And the first thing you're going to do after you kind of press it is cut your square in half diagonally. Just once, not twice, just once. Okay, you can do that, right? You've got that so far, right? And I could feel that like there was a glitch in my cutter as I did that. Okay, all the way across. Little glitch in my, I have to get a new blade. Talk on it. Okay, so you've cut it in half, your square in half diagonally once. Now you're going to lay out your pieces and you're going to, and it shows you in the instructions each and every time how to lay these out. But first you're gonna have kind of, I start out, because I kind of started and I was going like this, how does this all go together? 
Start out by laying your fabric so when you're looking at it, and of course it's upside down to you, but I have an L right here. So my right angle is right here facing me, looks like an L. Okay? Then you're going to match up the other flat side of your triangle right up against it. Okay? So you kind of have an upside down L. So first this was an L, and so now I'm going to lay my other piece just like that. And the instructions show you how to lay that out so you can see what it's going to look like. Okay? Just like that. You're going to flip this over, right sides together, and you're going to leave just a little bit of that point sticking out so that when you start here, you, your quarter of an inch will hit right where these two intersect. So they're not going to be even. If you lay your point so it's even with your fabric, it's not going to work very well. You need to just oppose it just enough so that when you start sewing, you have a quarter of an inch. You have a yep. So you have a quarter of an inch starting right here, and then as you sew towards the top, you're going to end up with a quarter of an inch right there. Alrighty. So let me show you what I did. I did that right here. So I stitched that. So you can see that my quarter of an inch started right there, and my quarter of an inch ended right there, where they, those two little points intersect. Now I'm going to press that open. I'm going to press it open. Here we go. All right, and for the Biani bags, they seem to like you to use a quarter inch seam. All right, not a quarter inch seam. That's not what I want to say. They do want you to use a quarter inch seam. But what they want you to cut is a two and a quarter inch binding. Two and a quarter inch binding. A lot of times when we do a quilt, we're doing two and a half inch binding. They have you do two and a quarter inches. So now when I'm laying this down in front of me, you can see that I have a biased edge here and a bias edge here. I'm going to start, and I'm going to kind of turn this so that I can actually cut it. But now I'm going to tell you, I've got my two and a half inch ruler, and I'm going to cut this at two and a quarter. And I'm just going to start along that long straight edge. I'm going to start cutting bias binding pieces. And I'm going to just cut them at two and a quarter inches all the way along. And of course, I've got that little nick in there. I'll push a little bit harder. I think I'll be okay. Two and a quarter inches all the way through this strip. And that's making two and a quarter inch bias binding pieces. That's easy, right? You can do this. You can do it, right? It's not hard. And you're going to keep cutting until you've gone all the way through all of your pieces. Now you're going to sew those together and you're kind of looking at it going, oh my gosh, how do I do that? And You've already got your angles cut, so you know you want to cut those at a four. You want to sew those together at a 45 degree angle. Well, they're already cut. So what I do is I kind of lay my first piece facing up and going. Oops, I'm going to do what everybody does. Okay, here we go. Try this. I lay my piece facing up. Okay, come on. I'm upside down and backwards. So we're going to go this way. So. I lay my piece facing up and it's going to my right and this piece is going to lay on the diagonal. So the diagonal is already here. Again, you're going to lay your piece so that it's got a quarter of an inch. Sure. Again, so your little tip starts at a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch there. So it's going to stick out a little bit. Again, don't line them up because once you sew those, those, these two strips will not line up. You're going to give yourself a little quarter of an inch there. Sew it, mm -hmm. press it open, and then move on to the next. And continue to do that. So you're going to, to up to the right. This guy's going to go here, goes in the machine, and you're going to continue sewing all of those together and fold them in half when you're all done. And you have a nice, you can see how springy that is. Nice, beautiful, bias binding. Super easy. You can do this, right? Yes. It's much easier than the one where you take it and you make a tube and then it's continuous and you keep going around and around. That is so confusing to people. 
this is very, even though you have to sew all these together, this is still super easy, super fast to do, very easy to understand. And that's what we want, right? Right. Right. Super easy. So any questions on that? No. Makes sense? Sounds good? People say it's easy. It's easy. You can do it. And the instructions, they include the instructions on how to do it on every single pattern. So if you forget, it's right there. Yeah, so it's very cool. And they tell you how much you have to cut in order to have enough to go around your project. So you, there's no guessing. No guessing at all. Okay. So last month we talked about the what? So what club? So what club is next Monday, the, uh-oh, 16th? <laughs> January 16th at 10 a.m. here in the store. So if you remember Patchwork Party, and when we had it in the store, we're going to do the same kind of thing. Um, the So What Club is $10 a month. You'll come in. You'll get free patterns. We'll chat. I'll give you tips and tricks on how to do those the projects that you're getting. You'll get the patterns for free and lots of ideas and fun. Um, part of the So What Club is going to be our, um, our So What Block of the Month. Now you don't have to do, yep, that's the one. I showed the blocks last month. This month we have it all sewed together. And this is just one of the three variations of the project that we're going to make. So you don't have to do this as part of the Sew What Club. We've got all kinds of other things that we'll be talking about, but one small portion of the Sew What Club will be doing this block of the month. Every month you will get the fabric for one of these blocks. So. Um, you can come in and pick the fabrics you like. You could pick from your stash and use your stash to do these. Um, so what you need, uh, but every month you're going to do one block. We'll give you the fabric for that block. If you finish your block and you bring it in the next month, you'll get the fabric for the next block free. And we're giving, I hope so. I'm so excited. It's been so long since we could be together like this. So it's a lot of fun. If you know what kind of fabric you would like, I'm sorry, what? The class is going to be next month, starting, it's going to be the third Monday of the month every month, and that third Monday, this month is January 16th, and we're meeting in the classroom at 10 a.m. You do not need to bring your sewing machine, it's a lecture class. So I will demonstrate how to do your block, we'll talk about other patterns, and you'll get free patterns, and... Um, show you all kinds of different projects to do, all kinds of different things. And I will also have other projects that you can do using this, the ruler and um, the blocks. So there's all kinds of projects, table runners, there's all kinds of different things you can do with this um, particular block. Um, so if you're interested in doing the block of the month part of uh, the So What Club, You'll want to sign up for that. It's the um, it's called the So What um, Free Block of the Month. I think that's how it is on our website, and that's twenty five dollars. And that gives you your booklet with all of your patterns in. The patterns are really well written, um, very good illustrations, and they're like I said, you this is this particular version is um, seventy five by ninety two, so it's a really good size quilt. But there's, you could also make a king or a queen. And there's different variations for doing that. And we'll talk about all those things during the class. The other thing that you would need to do the block of the month is the cat's cradle tool. And that's on our website as well. It's called cat's cradle tool. So you um, check, your, check your stash. Oh, cats, apostrophe, not plural. <laughs> not plural cats, apostrophe S. So if... Yeah, it should still come up because I think I just put in Cat's Cradle and it comes up. It doesn't? Okay, I lied. Um, so Cat's Cradle Tool um, should be in the Patchwork Party section of our website. And um, you'll need this tool as well. Every month you will use this ruler to make um, a portion of the block that, you're, that you see up here. So any questions on how that works and what you're going to do? I hope you can join us. Um, you can pick out the line of fabric that you like. If you want batiks, that's great. If you want to use the new Kim Deal, that's great. So you can Lori Holt, awesome. 
Um, it comes out beautiful. I used the gray's fabric that's in mine. Um, so you can pick out the fabric that you like and um, make a beautiful quilt and get together with all the ladies and we're going to have lots and lots of fun. So if you have any questions on that along the way, email me, text me, call me, whatever. I'm happy to help you. And if you do have questions, we're going to answer all your questions next Monday and we'll get you all going. We'll have extra books, extra rulers, everything that we need to get going. And we're just going to have a really fun year. We're so excited to be able to do a patchwork party style class back in the store again after so long. So I hope you can join us for that. So that's next Monday, the 16th at 10 a.m. This week, Thursday, we have our oval rug class. That's going to be um, Thursday from 1 to 4. So um, there's still probably a couple spots left in that if you're interested in making one of the oval um, jelly roll rugs. So what else can I tell you? I think that's about it. Any questions, anything, don't forget to like us, share us, comment, um, and join our YouTube channel so that your name goes in for a gift card tonight. And PP20 gets you 20% off of anything in the Patchwork Party section of the website tonight. And Happy New Year to everyone. We look forward to seeing you all. And we got lots of fun things planned. And if you need anything, you just holler because we'll we got you covered. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And we will see you again next time. And until then, bye. Bye. <laughs>